serve. He's two and one in four starts with the Expos. The ERA spotless at 169, and he is one tough customer. But bear in mind one thing: the Cubs are 15 and six against left-handed starters this year. So Mike Belecki will have his work cut out for him, and he's going to the mound for the Cubs. He's throwing the ball exceptionally well, and if he can control the low outside corner to the right and left-hand hitters, he's going to be in good shape. This is a tough park to hit the ball out, especially when you keep the ball away from the hitters. Belecki's been hot. The Cubs looking to stay in first place and win this series two out of three. It's going to be exciting. It was a brilliant game yesterday, so stay tuned for baseball. I did it, among other great plays. Next offense, Jerome Walton drove in the winning run last night. And then there is pitching in the clutch. And Mitch Williams is going to do it for you right here. Cubs win. That was the story last night. What will the story be today? Stay with us for all the excitement coming up in a moment. Baseball is brought to you in part by Budweiser, Beachwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Your Chicagoland, Northwest Indiana, better Buick dealers. The Great American Road belongs to Buick. True Value Hardware, for quality selection and personal attention, make True Value Hardware your store of first choice. The Chicago Tribune, where you'll always get the freshest sports. Unical 76, who invite you to go with the spirit, the spirit of 76. Pepsi, a generation ahead. Canon, proud to be the official camera of the Chicago Cubs. United Airlines, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. And Nissan, building cars for people who want more than just a means of getting from here to there. Nissan, built for the human race. Harry Carey from Olympic Stadium in Montreal where they're still talking about the thrilling ball game last night. But that was last night and today's another day. This is the third final and rubber game of the series. And they have their celebrated pitcher going. Mark Langston, Mike Belecki pitching for the Chicago Cubs. You know, looking back, to the ball game last night. I wonder if we ever had an exhibition which included the three ingredients that we were just talking about to having a winning ball club. The defense, not only did Dawson make a great catch, next was Jerome Walton made a sensational catch. And then after that, they moved around to left field and Dwight Smith raced in the left center to rob Davey Martinez of at least a double or triple. And then there was a pitching of Sutcliffe. We've seen him many times when he's had better stuff, but never when he pitched a guttier, a more courageous ball game and kept his team in there all the way for the victory, needing just a little bit of help in the later stages. So what will we have today? Let's hope we have those th same three ingredients going and notably and primarily the great pitching from Mike Belecki. Stay with us now. We'll have the starting lineups in a moment. Hello again, everybody, with Steve Stone and Dwayne Stats. Harry Carey at Olympic Stadium in Montreal as the Expos take the field. And here are the lineup for the Cubs. Jerome Walton in center. Dwight Smith in left. Ryan Sandberg in second. Andre Dawson in right. Damon Berryhill, the catcher. Lloyd McLendon playing first. Vance Law at third. Domingo Ramos. The shortstop and Mike Balecki was 1-5 and lost two will be the pitcher for the Expo. Leading off Otis Nixon in center. Tom Foley at second. Andres Galarraga at first. Tim Raines in left. Hubie Brooks in right. Tim Wallach at third. Marty Peavy, the catcher. Spike Owen, the shortstop. And the celebrated 28-year-old left-hander, 
Mark Langston on the mound. He's won two and he's lost one for the Expos after being four and five for Seattle. There are the umpires, Bill Hahn behind the plate, Bruce Fleming at first, Terry Taylor at second, and David Demuth at third. A big crowd on hand, and we're ready to play baseball. And may it be as exciting a game as was last night's, and with the same ultimate result. Cubs are 15 and 6 this year against left handed starters as you look at the defense and how they'll line up behind Mark Langston. One notable change Otis Nixon playing center field today. Dave Martinez generally starts against right hand pitchers, but Buck Rogers probably has a hunch on Nixon, who is a great base runner. And perhaps they think today, in the absence of a long ball against Balecki, who doesn't give up a lot of home runs, they're going to try to be an aggressive base stealing team. So Langston on for the fifth time this year. Mark Langston, 6'2", 195 pounds. A very fine pitcher. This is our first look at him other than spring training. Well, the Cubs are familiar with him because they saw him throw a lot. And they didn't score too many runs off him in his years with the Seattle Mariners. He's got a fastball curve slider and change his best pitch the overhand curve but he does have a very lively fastball. Here's Jerome Walton. First pitch a curve inside. Walt drove in the decisive run last night. Two out of nine for the series. Hitting 270 for the year. Two homers and 11 RBI. Langston. Line drive, he won't pitch a no hitter today. Walton starts the game off with a line single to right. You know, I remember in spring training they were talking if Walton would hit 240 or 250. He can play regularly with the Cubs. He's only over 270 right now. And Henry, the on-base percentage has been steady since he's come up here. And when you have a leadoff man getting on base like Jerome Walton, whose on-base percentage is up over 340, you have to consider yourself blessed. Here now is Dwight Smith. He tried to bunt, bunt and foul. It's a, a, a surprise of a sort, but it's a tribute to the showing of Dwight Smith that he's being started against a left-hander like Langston. Probably the toughest left hander in baseball. Owen won the count. High and inside. White Smith is four out of nine in the series. It's not a bad idea to lay down a bunt to the right side. You move along the base runner, you try to get on top of Langston early. He fanned 16 men in May of 88 against Toronto. One ball, one strike. Very fluid overhanded motion. Good throw. I would imagine he's going to be tough to steal on, too. One ball, one strike. Beebe's got a pretty good arm behind the plate. Again, the throw. Langston will have to be careful because Bruce Fremming probably calls the balk as close as anybody in the National League and you can bet he'll be taking a look at that leg and if he swings it over the rubber he'll have to go home. There's a drive high pop fly into the stands out of play. One ball two strikes. And Dwight Smith is trying to hit that ball to the opposite field. It's a good thing to try against a tough left hander. And you're a left handed batter. Not only was Langston a great pitcher in high school, but he also won all state honors in soccer. So he's an all around athlete. One ball, two strikes. There's a drive way back in the right field near the wall. It is caught by Hubie Brook. Holy cow. One more biscuit for breakfast, and that would have gone over the wall. You're wondering if Dwight Smith can hit left handed pitchers. This is the toughest left hander around and Dwight Smith almost took him out of the ballpark. UB Brooks with no room to spare makes the catch. And you can have a little assisting win here. We're in the Olympic Dome. 70 degrees with no wind blowing. Here now is Sandberg. One on one out. 
and he saved speaking of defense he saved the game with a great stop of what looked like a single a center that would have tied the game or won it for Montreal there he goes there's a peg save a stolen day Jerome Walton guesses right and the Cubs who stole two bases yesterday get on the board early in the stolen base department stolen base number seven for Walton and number 73 for the ball club tough pitch to handle for Marty Peavy doesn't make a particularly good throw but the ball is down and Walton is in easily watch it again and the Cubs will be trying to take advantage of Peavy today here's Sandberg one ball no strikes Curveball outside. Ball two. Andre Dawson coming up next. Andre. Stroked a double in the single last last night. Two balls, no strikes. There's a pickoff play safe, a close play. The second baseman Tom Foley is charging in there. Good pickoff play. This is daylight. No signal given. Somebody just goes to the bag. In this case, Tom Foley. And Walton just in under the tag. The call by Terry Tata. And that was close. Two balls, no strikes. One out. Walton a good lead again. Look out. There he goes. There's a peg. Save. He steals third also. Ball three. To Sandberg. Three balls, no strikes, one out. And the Cubs have picked something up against Mark Langson. He's got a long, slow delivery coming straight over the top, and Walton got an extra step at second base. Here you see the good break. Langston takes time to deliver the ball, and he's got to realize in the National League they'll run him out of the ballpark if he continues with that motion. Hey, look at PB was a little slow getting rid of the ball, also. Now the pitch. Ball four. And runners are on first and third one out and here is Andre Dawson two out of eight both hits last night in the series hitting 281 for the year the infield playing back for the double play Dawson has a lifetime 348 batting average with six homers and 27 RBIs against his former teammates and he's the number one hot hitter against the Expos. Field back to pit. Her inside and high. A few Cub fans and Bud fans from Chicago, Kathy and Pete Jetson from Palatine, and Joanne and John Kopitas from Northbrook. Cubs want to stay out of the double play. They might be able to run with Sandberg. There's a long drive, deep center field, way back. It might be out of here. It is! A three run homer, Andre Dawson. Holy cow! And True Value happily donates $300 to Cubs Care in the fight against cancer. Look at that dugout. Look at Domingo. Look at Mark Grace, Mitch Williams. Three to nothing in favor of the Cubs. Whoa, did he crush that ball over the center field wall? Directly center field. Look at Zim. <laughs> Langston throwing a lot of high fastballs and he's paying for it. The sixth home run by Andre Dawson. RBIs 21, 22, and 23. And Langston hasn't had a chance to settle down and the Cubs on top. Boy, you think we could miss Dawson? There's a pitch a little bit outside. He's just starting now. Last night you could see him looking like himself and tonight more like himself. Here's a pitch to Barry Hill. 0 oh and 2. That's a third home run off Langston since he joined the Expo. That's an only 32 innings, three, three home run. He struck him out on a curveball. Two out. Let's take a look at Andre Dawson once again and the blow that put the Cubs on top three to nothing a high fastball Andre doesn't miss many of these in the Chicago Tribune round tripper replay shows the home run went around 420 feet to straightaway center field. 
His line McLendon. Pitches high and inside. Two hits and a walk. Dawson's three run homer. Don Zimmer wanted to see more three run homers. He just saw one for the Cubs. And this is a guy who's three run homer the first game he played for the Cubs in the regular season. Turned the club around. That's right after Dawson had to leave the playing ranks with an injury. Curve in there, a beauty. One ball, two strikes. Lloyd McClendon has seen Mark Langston. He had a three run homer against Langston in a B game this spring. One ball, two strikes. Round ball foul outside third base. Three to nothing in favor of the Cubs. Rubber game of the series. A lot of Cub fans are on hand here. One ball, two strikes. High and inside. Bill Hedber, formerly of North Riverside, Illinois, now living in Barry, Vermont, here with a group of 40 rooting for the Cubs. Low and outside ball three. Three balls, two strikes, two out, three runs home. Lloyd McLendon. Fouls it off again. Other Chicago fans, Kevin and Tim Kalisa from Hammond, Indiana, are here. We saw last night Rick Sutcliffe having some trouble in the first inning, and many times good pitchers will struggle in the first inning before getting their rhythm. The Cubs did not allow Langston to get his rhythm before they got on the board. Here's ball four. The second man, he's walked. And here is Vance Law, who contributed a, contributed a vital blow last night. A two out double to right to tied up the ball game at 2 2 before Jerome Walton later on. Scored the winning run with a single. McClendon has stolen four bases this year, and he'll take off if you don't watch him carefully. Now the pitch by Lang. There he goes. There's a throw. Too late. I don't know whether they're stealing on Langston or whether they're running on P Peavy. Peavy seems to wind up before he throws. Well, there's no doubt that PV is taking some time, Harry, but look at the break he gets. And Langston, with the long, slow delivery, it's impossible for PV on this play to throw anybody out. So Langston has got to gear himself to the National League base runners, or he's going to have some problems. Now the pitch a little bit high. That's a fifth stolen base for Lloyd McClendon. And here comes Larry Bernard. The pitching coach out. I think he's going to talk to him about this, Harry, because I don't know if any other team has been able to take advantage of it. The Cardinals beat him in one game, and then he turned around and shut out the Cardinals, so he found something. That was probably keeping Vince Coleman off base. But the Cubs have shown this year that they're going to try to run more than any other year before. It's 75 stolen bases for the Cubs. They lead Montreal by two. They've only stolen 73, and this is supposed to be a very aggressive Montreal team. Two balls, no strikes. A man in scoring position. Three runs already home. On Andre Dawson, sixth homer of the year. His 21st, 22nd, and 23rd runs batted in. Two balls, no strikes. There's a drive in the left field. And it's caught by Tim Raines in foul territory. That ends the inning, but three runs scored. There were two hits, one left. We go in the bottom of the first, comes out in front, three to nothing. Harry Carey back to the ballpark where the Cubs are out in front, three to nothing on Andre Dawson's home run with two on. Here is Otis Nixon to lead it off. Now it's up to Mike Budlecki to hold him. Here's the pitch. Fastball a little bit outside. Vance Law playing a very shallow. So is uh, Lloyd McLendon. This guy very fast. Strike call. The count is evened up. Bill Hong is the plate umpire. Steve North and Pam Neverett. 
Charleston, Illinois, watching the Cubs. There's a high pump ball out of play into the stand. Malecki's one and three lifetime against Montreal. He's participated in eight games against them. His ERA very high at 514. And last time out against the Mets, he threw the ball very well and won the ball game, going six and a third innings, giving up six hits and two earned runs. Now the pit. Swung and he struck him out. Otis Nixon goes down swing. One man out here is Tom Foley. 0 for 3 last night, hitting 220 for the year. Three homers and 17 RBI. Last night, the Expos made it tough on Rick Sutcliffe because Dave Martinez had a good night. And the best way to keep a man who has stolen 20 bases off base is to do just what Belecki did throw the fastball by him and send him to the bench. Pitch to Foley, a little bit low, ball one. Well, a happy Father's Day to fathers everywhere. One out, the pit. There's a drive. It's deep in right field, and Andre Dawson, who knows his field very, very well, makes the catch. Foley hit the ball hard, but right at Dawson, two out. Tom Foley will be excused if he wonders where Andre Dawson's playing him. Last night, second hitter of the ball game, he hit the ball in the gap in right center field. Dawson on the run made the catch. Tonight, he hit the ball. More toward the line, and Dawson was right there again. Two men out. Here's Andres Galarraga hitting 248. Four out of eight in this series. The pitch. Strike call. The Williams family from St. Johnsbury, Vermont, pulling for the Cubs here today. He started a swing. They appeal, and Bruce Fremming says he went around strike two. 0 and 2, two out. You can get inside on Andres Galarraga, but that's the danger zone in there if you miss just on the plate. If you stay away from him, you should be okay. And Mike Vilecki generally is able to control that low outside corner. So this is his 12th start of the year and his first against the Expos. Fastball outside. Jim and Donna Connor from Mattoon, Mattoon, Illinois, here with her daughter and family pulling for the Cubs. One ball, two strikes. He struck him out. And by Lucky, Breeze through the first with two strikeouts. At the end of one, the Cubs lead three to zip. Harry Carey back in Montreal. We go into the second, Domingo Ramos. One of the stars last night, he was three for four, scored the winning run on Jerome Walton's hit. Pitch is in there for a strike call. You know, whoever built this, uh, the contractor, had a clause in his contract. There's a pitch swung, base hit in the right field. And Ramos is really amazing. He's hitting 270, he's over 270 now, with a line drive single to right. What's amazing thing about Ramos is the other day in Wrigley Field he had the first triple of his career and yesterday he had the first game where he had two infield hits in the same game. So he's not used to those flying feet. And not only that he scored the winning run from second base on a solid single to left beating gambling on Tim Raines and making it with a hip first slide in the home plate. One of the few times that Reigns didn't put the ball right on the plate, a little bit off to the side. Lucky's going to have to bunt this to first base. He does. Foul, though. One ball, one strike. I started to tell you about this roof. There, the contractor has to prove that the roof works 10 straight times or pay $10 million. There's a bunt. Only play will be the first base. Easy out. But we have a man in scoring position, and here's Jerome Wall. In other words, 
the people wanted to make sure the, the roof would work before they paid off the bill for building this, <laughs> this uh, dome stadium. Unless he can make the, the roof work, that retractable roof work, to the satisfaction of the people who run this stadium, you don't get his, it cost him $10 million. They do it at night, Harry, and he has to do it 10 straight nights. They've done it five nights now, so five more to go. And if it doesn't work, not only does he have to pay the 10 million, but he's got to put in another couple million to put in the air conditioning in this dome, and it's cost a billion dollars already. Let me tell you, though, don't feel too sorry about that contractor. I bet you he figured all that in his price. That's why it cost a billion dollars to build it. Well, to put it in perspective, there's four domes currently being used, and you could pay for them all for what it cost to build this one. <laughs> Two balls, no strikes, one out, a man in scoring position. Mark Langston. The pit. Strike call. Two balls and a strike. Cubs have a man in scoring position, one out. Jerome Walton started the ball game with a single to right. And then stole second and third. High ball three. Let's pause for station identification. You're watching Cubs baseball on WGN, Chicago's very own Channel 9. Jerome Walton count three balls, one strike, one out. Ramos, the runner at second. Look at that wide open stance. Whoa, what a stop by Wallach. It'll be a hit, though. He's lucky he got down in time to stop that ball. It was hit like a shot. A base hit. Runners in first and third. Wallach didn't expect Walton to pull the ball, but he gets a low fastball, and he drives it to third. And if you wonder why they call it the hot corner, this is why. This is a rope right at Wallach. He's got to move quickly to his right. He saves a run by knocking the ball down. And good heads up base running by Ramos. He gets in easily at third. Here's a good situation to butt here. He butted up the right side. He get a run. He was going to do it, but the pitch was bad, and he took it for a ball. Now he looks at Chuck Cotier. Runners at first and third, one out. The Cubs have had four hits off of Langston already. Throw the first runner back. Jerome Walton is still second and third in the first inning. I try to steal second again. Her ball inside, ball two. Two balls, no strikes, one out. Langston is going to have to adjust that high swinging leg kick and long, slow delivery. So far, he's made no adjustment at all. The Cubs try to run him out of the ballpark in the first inning with the three stolen bases. Walton getting a little bigger lead at first. Two balls and a strike. Ground ball, a run will score. The play is made by Foley, throwing out Smith on a close play, but he drives in. His 21st run of the year, and the Cubs are out in front, four to nothing. Walton taking second on the play. Happy dugout. Boy, this team is really all hyped up. That was a big, big ball game last night. The Cubs realize this is a big game with Dwight Smith doing the job against the premier strikeout pitcher. He makes contact, and that play at first is very close. Almost beat it out. Here now is Sandberg. Sure, a little bit outside, ball one. I thought it was very significant that Dwight Smith started today in left field against the highly celebrated left-hander Mark Langston. And he almost hit a homer his first time. And he drives in a run the second time. Harry, I think he's shown Don Zimmer that you can put him in left field and not worry about him defensively. That was a concern, but he's made all the plays in left field. Yeah. And he also has hit everybody who's gone to the mound against him. Now ready. Curve in there, a strike call. 
Two balls and a strike. Four to nothing. The Cubs are out in front. Ryan Sander would like to drive this one home. He leads the team with 31 RBIs, 10 homers. Curve strike two. And the count is even up to two and two. A lot of people wanting to wish their fathers a happy Father's Day. The pitch. Inside. Ball three. Three balls, two strikes. That was a fastball to the inner portion. Didn't catch the corner. The Expos are giving Walton third base if he wants to take it. Now the pitch. Struck him out to retire the side. But one run, two hits, no errors, one left. We go in the bottom of the second, four to nothing in favor of the Cup. Carry back in the ballpark in Montreal. After every inning, Mark Langston walks into the clubhouse where they have hot towels waiting for him to apply to his pitching uh, arm. And what would happen here if they didn't have the hot towels? How many runs he'd give up? One strikes a count on Tim Raines. That evens it up. A ball and a strike. The Cubs four runs on four hits. The big one, the three-run homer by Andre Dawson. One ball, one strike. Fouls it back. One and two. Would you believe it? Tim Raines is nothing out of 15 for the year against the Cubs pitching. I shouldn't have mentioned. One ball, two strikes. Struck him off. Nothing out of 60 now. I'm glad I did mention. Well, when Tim Raines could have been a free agent two years ago, a lot of sentiment in this organization was to let him go like they did to Andre Dawson. But Dave Dombrowski stepped in and said, look, if we're going to be a contender, we have got to have Tim Raines in the middle of this lineup. So they paid a little extra money and they signed him up on a multi-year contract. One man out is Hubie Brooks. There's a strike call. You know, by lucky now, his band three out of the first four men he's faced. Now the pitch, here it is. Strike call over the outside corner. 0 oh, and 2 the count. Good straight change to Hubie Brooks. And what that does is put into the hitter's mind that you're going to throw more than just a fastball and a slider. He's got to look for another variety out there on the mound. Now the pitch. Missed the outside corner. Vicky Sylvester from Palatine. Here to root for the cup. One ball, two strikes, one out. There's a drive in the left field. And it's caught nicely by Dwight Smith. Brooks hit that ball hard. Dwight Smith might have had a little trouble picking it up, but he made the catch. By now, everybody's heard about the rumors out of San Francisco that they're going to acquire Steve Pedrosian. But Al Rosen also has another trade cooked up, and that's with the New York Yankees for Ricky Henderson. Names in that deal, Gerelts and Maldonado, as well as a young pitcher. So Rosen trying to make something happen in San Francisco. Here's a pitch a little bit outside, ball one. Steve Belds and his wife, Kim. Steve's father, Jim. Watching the game in Park Ridge. Happy Father's Day. The pitch low and outside. And Karen Preston of Toronto wants to wish her dad, George Preston, in Itasca, Illinois, the same greeting. Three balls, no strikes on Tim Wallach. Two out. Cubs leading four to nothing. Str 
drive called fastball at the knee. The Saruti family from Aurora, Illinois, all here watching the ball game. Ball four. He walked. It. Ed Paletti wants his children, Lou and Jenna, to know that he's thinking about him on this Father's Day, and he thinks he's expecting a pretty big gift when he gets home off this road trip. In other games, Texas leading the Yankees two to nothing at the end of two. Baltimore out in front of Oakland three to nothing in the bottom of the second at Baltimore. Cleveland leads Kansas City one to nothing at the end of two. Here now is Marty Peavy, the catcher. Fastball outside. He started his career in the St. Louis Cardinal organization, and he caught the eye of Joe Sparks, the hitting instructor of the Expos. Sparks insisted that they get him. They did, and it was Sparks who championed his cause, both the double, triple, A, and now the major leagues. Now the pitch. A high pop fly Sandberg's out calling for the ball to retire the side. At the end of two, the Cubs four, the Expos nothing. Hey, Perry Carey and Steve Stone. Hey, I thought Kamini Kamini had, had died. The guy looks like him, doesn't it? It's one of Arnie Harris's head shots. Here's Andre Dawson, who hit the big three-run homer in the first inning. You have a tendency on the mound when a man has hit your best fastball out of the park to throw him an assortment of breaking balls the next time up, and that's exactly what Dawson just saw. There's the pitch outside, ball two. Now we'll see if Andre sees a fastball, and if it's up high, could have the same result. Dawson doesn't miss many high fastballs. Two balls, no strikes. Third ball. It's in there for a strike call. There's Bruce Fremming working at first today. He had a cut in the Birthday greetings to Mark Mabry of Albemarle. North Carolina. The Cub fan. Swings a high pop line. Foley going out. Makes a jack. Five straight curveballs to Andre Dawson. So Langston isn't taking any chances even with nobody on base. Here's Damon Berryhill fanned his first time up. Mark Rupert of Chicago watching the game here. There's a drive. Deep center field. Way back is Martinez. I mean, Odin Simpson. And he makes the cut. Barry Hill. We really hit that ball a long way. Boy, that'll give you an idea how far Dawson had to hit it to get his homer. It's 404 to straightaway center field, and Otis Nixon uses it all to haul down this drive by Damon Berryhill. If he pulls this ball even a little bit, it's out of the park. But there's plenty of room back there. Here's McLendon walked his first time up. Pass ball is high. We're in the top of the third with the Cubs out in front four to nothing. Ball two is high. Boy, you really got to, really got to appreciate the job that this guy has done for the cut. Lloyd McClendon. Two balls, no strike. Ball three. Don Zimmer credits him for turning the team around when they were really down, lost five in a row. He was called up from Iowa, did a three-run homer. His first time at bat. The Cubs, with that blow, ended their losing streak, and they've been leading the league or very close to it ever since. Ball four, and McLendon walks. 
Here's Vance Law. He's two out of eight in this series. Hitting 223. He drove in a mighty big run. Last night to tie up the ball game. Clendon stole a base when he got out in the first inning, and he might be looking for more of the same here. He's got five stolen bases to his credit now. They pitch out. Yesterday they pitched out twice in a row. Buck Rogers might be doing that again. That might be one of the few weapons that Langston will have to hold base runners close with that motion. Van Slaw. There's a throw over there. It was close. And Clemson got back. Standing up. One ball, no strikes. He started a swing. He went around. One ball, one strike. Well, on the Glendon proves you really don't know about a ball player until you have a, until he has a chance to play every day. Then he can show the talent he really has. One ball, one strike, two out. You know, it's a strike ball. You know something in the, in the final analysis. <clears throat> Dawson's injury may have proven to be a boon for the Cubs' chances. Now he's back in the lineup, and there are guys who have a chance to show some of what they can do while he was hurt. McLendon certainly falls in that category, and so does Dwight Smith. Well, you're right about not being able to analyze a player unless he plays every day, Harry, because coming off the bench is a whole different hitting philosophy. Now the pitch. Swung on, high pop foul, coming back out of play. Langston hasn't shown the base runners yet that he can swing his leg and make the move to first base. Every time he's thrown to first, it's been either step back off the mound and flip it over there, or raise the leg very slowly and throw it there. But every time he whips the leg around, he comes home. And let's see if McClendon tries to take advantage of the running situation right here. One ball, two strikes. There's a drive in the left center. It's rolling deep, going almost to the wall. There's a runner around to third base. Oh, I tell you, Tim Range utilized his speed, kept the ball from going to the wall, and that's all that prevented McClendon from scoring. With the spacious dimensions here in Montreal, there's no substitute for speed in the outfield. Vance Law takes a breaking ball that Langston gets up, and he drives it what looks to be into the gap. But Reigns cuts it off. McClendon was not running on the pitch, and that's what kept him at third base. Pretty good effort right here by Reigns, and you'll know why the Expos figure they've got as good a defensive outfield as anybody. They're going to walk Domingo Ramos intentionally to get to Bilecki. Bilecki's one out of 26 for the year. Ramos, who's five out of nine in this crucial series, has made believers out of the expo. There's manager Buck Rogers. He doesn't let many opportunities slip by. Fine manager. He's also said that he goes a little longer with his starters these days. And over the past 36 games, they've averaged seven and a third innings per start. And that's by design. Buck Rogers knows that without Jeff Parrott in that bullpen, and they traded Parrott to Philadelphia for Kevin Gross, they've got a hole in middle relief. So he gets around that hole by not using them. But he's expecting Joe Hesketh, a left-hander who struggled early this year, to rejoin the club in Chicago and bring their pitching staff to a full complement of 10. The bases are loaded with two out, and here's Mike Bilecki. The pit. High and outside. One ball, no strikes. Oh, boy. As long as you've got a bat in your hand, you can be dangerous, no matter what the statistics show. Bases loaded. One ball, no strike. Fastball right in there. And the count is evened up. By lucky sacrifice. His first time up. McClendon down the line at third. Oh, 
strike too, but you can't hit it without swinging. McClendon's getting a great jump at third base. I wonder if he'd entertain the idea of coming all the way down and putting the pressure on Langston. One ball, two strike. Here he comes down the line. He struck him out. And the bases are left loaded. We go in the bottom of the third. The Cubs still leading. Four to nothing. Carry back at Olympic Stadium. We go into the bottom of the third. Spike Owen leading it off. Now the pitch a little bit high. Owen almost tied up the ball game in the bottom of the ninth. A sensational stop by Ryan Sander kept the time run from scoring, although it was a hit for Owen. There's a strike call, a ball and a strike. To send along congratulations to a great Cub fan, Ricky Lazara, graduating from college, looking on an Oak Lawn. One ball, one strike. The pitch. Fouled it back. One and two. Spike Owen has been a pretty effective hitter in this series. Three out of eight. Three homers, 20 RBI. The Expos knew they weren't getting another Ozzy Smith when they traded for Spike Owen, but he's been steady at shortstop. A little bit low, that evens it up. Two and two. Mark Langston, pretty fair hitting pitcher, will be next. Fouls it back. Two and two. Out in front, four to nothing. This game would put the Cubs right at the 500 mark on this road trip. And there you look at Langston, who still has his arm in towels. Two balls, two strikes. Foul the back again. Two and two. Spike going. His brother Dave, a member of the Cub team in 84, and playing for their Iowa Farm Club, I think even now. Two balls, two strikes. Ball three. Three and two of the count. A high pop fly ought to be easy for Vance Law. And it is. One man gone. Owen. Pop. The Law. That last pitch showed you the maturity of Mike Bilecki. Because he didn't try to overthrow that fastball. In fact, he took something off the fastball. He made it sink. Owen looking straight fastball. Bilecki just turns it over. And it was the speed rather than the location that fooled Owen. Here now is Mark Langston hits right handed, although he pitches left handed. Owen oh, won the count, one out. There's a drive in the right field, going back, back, back. It's against the wall. Here's Langston going to second with a double. Langston double off the right field wall. his third hit of the year out of 14 times at bat. Galecki gets the ball up and even with a pitcher you see what happens when a sinker baller throws the ball above the waist. Langston drives this ball right down the line and he's in at second base. So you're looking at a pretty good athlete folks. That's the first hit off of by Lecky. And it's by the pitcher Mark Langston. Here's Otis Nixon. One out, one on. Ground ball. McClendon has it after knocking it down and steps on the back for the out. And there's two away. And here's Tom Foley, who lined hard to Dawson in the first. 
you really have to appreciate the job that Lloyd McClendon has done. Regardless of where Don Zimmer puts him, he seems to fill the bill. And filling in for Mark Grace at first base, he's been close to flawless at this position. At first base, all you have to do is knock the ball down. But remember, this ball hits off the dirt after hitting off the artificial surface. And generally, it'll pick up a little more spin. McClendon stays right with it, makes the play. Here now is Foley. Fouls it back. One strike to nothing, two men out, runner at third is Mark Langston, the pitcher who doubled the right. Strike to call over that outside corner. And so, by luck, he's way ahead of him, 0 and 2. Just miss. Could have called that one a strike. One ball, two strike. Dwayne will be joining Steve after the inning. Two out, a runner at third, four to nothing in favor of the Cubs. Fouled it back and out of play. Cubs played Tom Foley to pull, despite the fact that he doesn't have a whole lot of power. But he showed the Cubs in this series that he tries to get the head of the bat out. Consequently, if Bilecki can get that sinker in the outside corner, he'll get that ground ball to second. One ball, two strikes. The delivery. High and outside, ball two. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Tom Foley hitting 220. It seems like a much better hitter than that. It's a ball hard. 2-2 two -two pitch. He fouled it back and out of play. Two balls, two strikes. Langston, the runner at third. The Cubs will have the top of their batting order to start the fourth. Walton leading off. Two balls, two strikes. The delivery. Swogan at the pitch. There's a man trying. I think he fouled it. I think he fouled it. I think he fouled it and he did. The runner Langston came racing to the plate. Here's Buck Rogers going to complain now. Well, the tip off that he fouled it, Harry, is the fact that Foley just stands right there. If he doesn't foul it, you know that he's going to race to first base. But that's the tip off. So Buck has got an argument. But his hitter knows that he fouled the ball, and there really isn't anything to argue about. Well, if that's so, how about from the other, the reverse side? Why would Barry Hill been chasing the ball? Well, he can't do he his own. He, he can't do his own umpiring, so he's got to go get the ball. But Foley's the tip-off. He's going to tell you if he fouled the ball or not, because if he didn't, when he sees the ball go back, he's going to take off the first, and the Expos are going to get the run. So Langston back at third. Here's the pitch. There's a drive in the right field. And a run is in. Boy, that Foley really watched that ball against each right-handed pitcher. Foley with RBI number 18. Galecki gets the ball right about waist high. Once again, it doesn't sink up that high, and Foley takes advantage of it. He rifled that ball into right field. Not only does that drive in the run, it prevents the side from being retired, keeps the inning alive, and brings up a more, much more dangerous hitter in Andres Galarraga, who fanned his first time up. Outside, ball one. One ball, no strikes. A double by the pitcher Langston with one out. A line single to right with two out by Foley. And the Expos are on the board. There's a long drive, but it is curving foul. 
Boy, that was hit home run distance. Good foul. That's a problem with going inside on Andres Galarraga. If he's guessing inside, he's going to whack it. And he's very strong. So although you can get him out under the hands, the only way to do it is to establish the outside corner to him. And in this situation, you'd be better off keeping the ball away from him than you would flirting with the inside part of the plate. One ball, one strike. Pirates scored two in the first at St. Louis. The Phillies lead the Mets five to one at the end of two. Two balls and the strike. There's a high fly ball to right. That'll retire the side. Andre Dawson puts it away. One run on two hits. Harry Carey from Montreal's Olympic Stadium, where the Cubs at the end of four, or at the end of three, lead the Expos four to one. Stadium fourth inning coming up with Steve Stone and our producer director Artie Harris. This is Dwayne Stats. So far, so good. The Cubs with a three run first, holding a four to one lead going into the fourth, Steve. And the Cubs jumped on Mark Langston early, and it's up to Mike Bilecki to make it hold up, and that's a tall order in this ballpark. Joe Walton's going to lead it off for the Cubs here in the fourth, top of the order. Walton takes the pitch low. He'll be followed by Dwight Smith and then Ryan Sandberg. Comes with three in the first, another run in the second inning. The Expos scored their run in the third. Walton oh. takes another one down and in. Langston not overly sharp today. Dawson's home run to straightaway center put the Cubs on the scoreboard. Cubs have four runs, five hits. Langston has issued four bases on balls. And Walton takes a strike. Fulton has shown that he is a patient leadoff hitter. More times than not, he'll work a pitcher, not swinging at the first pitch, waiting to get him in a situation where he has to come to him. 2-1. Now it's three balls and a strike. He's in a situation right now where you know you don't want to walk the leadoff man, especially a man with speed and a man who stole two bases in the first inning, so he should be seeing a fastball. Look at Langston, the 28 year old left hander. And there's ball four, walk number five issued to the Cubs by Langston. So Walton, who has been running up a storm lately, he has steals in each of his last four games, including those two in the first inning, has a leadoff walk in the fourth. And here's Dwight Smith. He's been trying to get the bunt down, but he hasn't been able to do it against Langston. And the pitches are starting to pile up for Mark Langston. That's cause for concern for Buck Rogers, who has a very suspect middle relief core. Smith officially over for 2. There goes Walton. Pitches a strike, and Jerome's in with his third stolen base. So the Cubs taking liberties with Langston. And they have four stolen bases against the Montreal left hander today. There's no doubt that Marty Peavy doesn't have the best arm in the world but there is no chance to get Jerome Walton when you get a jump like this. It's a breaking ball easy to run against and Langston's going to have to do something or he's going to continue to have problems. Now pickoff play at second with Foley breaking to the bag but Walton's back in. You know Steve. That's a problem certainly that Langston faces but this entire Montreal staff has a big problem with that and it's not something that they seem to be overly concerned with Buck Rogers likes to from time to time call a pitch out to try to combat the opposition from running but it's not something that they've directly addressed. The pitch is a ball so the count goes to one and one on Dwight Smith and over the period of a year. If you have a club contending hoping to win a division something like that could very well cost you a few games. Well the Cubs haven't had an opportunity to be too aggressive against Montreal in the three games they played here before but they have been in this series and there's a reason why they're three and eight against the St. Louis Cardinals and I got to believe it's the stolen base situation. 
Walton dancing away from second and Langston steps off the rubber. The Cubs four of four running today. They are 12 out of 15 on the year running against Montreal. And the pitch misses low. It's two and one. That holds true for their other starting pitchers as well as the men out of the bullpen. And as you look at the catchers, stolen bases to cost stealing ratios, they're not very good, whether it's Sandovania, Fitzgerald, and Peavy. And it's difficult, really, to judge the catchers because, as you point out, Peavy had no chance on the jump that Walton got in this inning. There's a high foul the other way. So the count is now even. When you break down their staff, Dwayne, you'll find that you have a lot of breaking ball pitchers. Certainly Langston has a slow delivery and throws a lot of curveballs. Pascual Perez throws 70 percent sliders. Dennis Martinez right at 50 percent on the breaking ball, as is Kevin Gross. And that's not a staff that would make it very easy on the catching staff. All the more reason to try to pay close attention to the runners, and they seemingly don't. Langston trying to keep Walton close out there at second base this time. Smith is out on strikes. Fourth strikeout for Langston and the first out in the fourth. Ryan Sandberg will have a chance to drive in the run. Sandberg has walked and has struck out. Ryan ninth in the league in home runs. He picked up his tenth home run of the year in the eighth inning Friday night off Bren Smith. You know, Arnie Harris pointed out a good point yesterday, and he said that the Cubs might have an advantage over some other teams in the National League because they've seen Langston for four years in spring training. No surprises today. This one is low, ball one. And Langston said that last night. We talked with him a few minutes before the game, and he said, for whatever reason, for an example, the Giants trained in Arizona. He didn't pitch against the Giants, but he did pitch against the Cubs. This one upstairs, 2-0, and, oh, and he admits that the first time through, he probably has the advantage over clubs that have not faced him before. Don't forget, there's advanced scouts in the stands today, and there will be every time Langston works. And if they're watching the way the Cubs are attacking Langston, it won't be long before everybody is trying to take advantage of him on the base pass. There goes Walton, the pitch down and in, and a throw, got it! Walton caught stealing. Peavy throws him out. So the Cubs lose a base runner on the caught stealing. A good pitch for Peavy to throw. He goes behind Sandberg and throws it right on the button. It's there waiting for Walton to arrive and a good tag by Wallach. Watch it again. The location more than anything else allowed Peavy to throw him out. There's ball four so the Cubs have another base runner. On the second walk of the inning, Sandberg walks on four pitches. Six bases on balls issued by Langston. And here's Andre Dawson, who picked the deepest part of the ballpark in the first inning when he hit it out to straightaway center. He crushed the ball. He hit it out with a lot to spare. His sixth home run of the year. He popped the second in the third. And Langston starts him with a strike. Andre has seen six straight breaking balls after hitting the fastball out of the park. Strike on the outside part of the plate. He's in the hole this time. Two strikes. Down Zimmer thought about not playing Dawson today, the third game of the series. But left it up to Andre, and with the off day tomorrow, Dawson's in there. I figured there was a three-run homer waiting for him somewhere around the first inning. The 0-2, way high. A ball, two strikes. You'd have to figure he's going to see a breaking ball right here. And although Don Zimmer doesn't like to run a great deal with Andre Dawson up, it's a great pitch to run for Sandberg. Two outs, Sandberg at first. There he goes, the one two, a swing and a miss on the breaking ball, and that retires the side. No runs, couple walks, caught stealing, and a man left. Bottom of the fourth coming. The score comes four, expose one. Bottom
bottom of the fourth comes leading four to one and Tim Raines will lead off for Montreal against Cub right hander Mike Pilecki. Raines, Brooks, and Walling. Pilecki struck out three, walked one, allowed a run on two hits so far. And Raines takes the first one high for a ball. Raines started the day at 281. 295 as a left handed hitter. Brooke Rogers has him hitting out of the cleanup spot. And the count is one and one. He hasn't been in any kind of groove against the Cubs, and hopefully he won't until we leave town because this man can be devastating offensively. And Buck Rogers knew with Galarraga, Brooks, and Wallach, he had to have a left hand hitter against a right hand pitcher in the middle of that lineup. Reigns was the obvious choice. Pitch high, two and one. Tim Raines drove in a run with a fly ball to right field in the first inning in last night's game. 0 for 16 on the year against the Cubs. And he pops it out of play. A foul ball back to third. Count square now at 2 2. Raines leading off the fourth. Montreal won the first night 8 to 5. Cubs moved back into first place with a victory last night, three to two. Sutcliffe, the winner, Mitch Williams picking up the save. Cubs leading Montreal by a half game in the National League East. Malecki got Reigns on a breaking ball in the second inning. Let's see if he goes back to it. He misses down. The count all the way to three two. Outfield playing Tim around toward left center, which would lead you to believe that on any fastball situation, Reigns is going to get that fastball out away from him. And Balecki misses wide, so he walks Reigns. That opens the bottom of the fourth, second walk of the day issued by Balecki. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Chicago National League Ball Club, which has a right of approval of the announcers and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or the use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Chicago National League Ball Club is prohibited. Yubi Brooks, line to left his first time, batting 275. Dangerous hitter up there. Range draws the throw. Reigns has stolen 14 bases this year. He's been caught five times. He's not the aggressive Reigns of years past, but he's still a quality base runner. Brooks rolls it foul, third base side for a strike. Yubi's grounded into five double plays this year, and if he hits the ball on the ground, they will turn a pair. As you look at Rick Sutcliffe, the hero of last night's game, Mark Grace about three days away from being ready to go. But Sutcliffe did a remarkable job with less than his best stuff. A strike to count on Brooks. Reigns takes his lead. And Balecki steps off. The Expos, six of 11 running against the Cubs. And of course, Reigns has not been on a lot against the Cubs, so. He does not have a steal against him this year. Brooks fouls this one. Got a little piece of Damon Berryhill, and the count goes to nothing and two. Buck Rogers' logic is simple. He thinks the bat of Tim Raines is more valuable to his glove, his club, than the legs of Tim Raines. And he knows with all the leg problems that Raines had last year ankle, knee, hamstring problems. He doesn't want to risk him too often. But this is a good running situation to keep the inning alive. Make sure Brooks doesn't hit into the double play. Who strikes the count on the Montreal right fielder. And a little tap foul up the first base side. The Mets are playing in Philadelphia. Batting in the top of the fourth inning, trailing five to two. West in relief of Ron Darling. Phillies scored four in the first. Ken Howell is pitching for the Phillies. Howell six and three going into that one. Howard Johnson, a solo homer in the third, is 16th home run of the year. The 0-2 again is wide. 
the Cardinals are home against Pittsburgh. Pirates have jumped to a two nothing lead at the end of one of that one. Morris Madden against Joe McGrain. In three West Coast games in the National League, Atlanta at Los Angeles, Houston at San Diego, and the Giants home against Cincinnati. A lot of action already going in the American League. Brooks fouls it into the screen. Here in Montreal, we're in the bottom of the fourth with the Cubs leading four to one. We saw Don Zimmer in the dugout, and he comes in line for congratulations for last night's game. Not only was he spotless out of the bullpen, going from Chiraldi to Williams and getting Sutcliffe out in time, but he went out to disrupt the rhythm of Pasquale Perez. The Cubs had done nothing against Perez until Zim went out there. They went on to get four hits and two runs in a crucial fourth inning. Brooks throws his bat at the ball, hits a chopper to short, out at second, and that's the only one they get. Valecki retrieves the bat on the front side of the mound. Reigns is forced at second. Hubie Brooks reaching on a fielder's choice. Hubie can throw his bat at the ball better than anybody in the league, and he does it to protect with two strikes. This ball out away from him, a great pitcher's pitch, a slider. No chance for two, but you take Tim Raines off base. You know, Steve, Zimmer, uh, before the game, was talking about uh, last night and asking the umpires to check Perez. And he says he didn't think it was any great move on his part. He wasn't uh, ready to class him, classify himself as a genius. Wallach bounces this one foul. He can be very modest that way, but he said the one thing about it, he said, I'm just the manager. And he said, my hitters thought something was up in the pitch that Sandberg struck out on. He said, the bottom fell out. And he said, I have to stick up for my hitters. He says, otherwise, they're not going to feel that I'm taking this thing seriously. And so when his hitters complained about it, he went out and pleaded the case on behalf of his hitters. There is no doubt that the pitch to Ryan Sandberg that he swung through dropped about six inches. And no other pitch that inning or afterward did the same thing from Pascual Perez. Pitch misses wide to Wallach, and the count is one and one. It's funny, Dwayne. You watch pitchers warm up, and the sinker never does that. But occasionally during the course of a ball game, you'll see a ball drop that much, and that's what alerted Don Zimmer to the fact that maybe something was on the ball. Sandberg felt there was, so it was, turned out to be a pretty good move. One one the count. Oscar first. Runner back and the Cubs made some great defensive plays last night. All three outfield positions turned in fine catches. Great catch by Dawson and right. Walton turned in a heck of a catch. And nice grab in left center field by Dwight Smith. This one is a strike on the corner, and the count is one and two. Or Sandberg, a nice play in the ninth inning to keep the ball in the infield and preventing the tying run from scoring. And Barry Hill denying the plate on the play at the plate. I think that was one of the crucial plays is the fact that Damon Barry Hill slid his leg out and blocked Tim Wallach off the plate. The man comes in feet first, and if you're going to get the ball before he gets there, there's no excuse for not doing exactly what Barry Hill did. It's a legal play and an excellent play on the part of the catcher. Wallach strokes this one foul out of play the other way. Over in the American League, Texas at New York. The Rangers leading four to one at the end of four innings. Ken Phelps a home run in the fourth for the only Yankee run. Huff and LaPointe the matchup. Oakland at Baltimore through four. The Orioles lead three nothing. Cleveland leading Kansas City one nothing through four at Cleveland. And Detroit the Angels lead the Tigers three to one at the end of four. Malecki's one two pitch to Wallet. Check swing, foul ball back into the screen. Seattle and Toronto have completed three at Toronto, four to one Mariners. Milwaukee and Minnesota, the two and a half, no score. And at Comiskey, the Red Sox and the White Sox underway. Price against Rosenberg. Giants had a first-hand look at Barry Larkin going down with a hyperextended knee yesterday. You think Al Rosen is trying to trade for every available available player in the league? I'll tell you the latest with the Ricky Henderson rumors flying about. Steve Bedrosian rumors yesterday. Wallach shoots one down the right side. This one twisting back into the stands foul. 
holding the count at one and two. That would be quite a move. The Ricky Henderson rumors. That's all they need to go with Mitchell and Clark out there would be Henderson. Well, the last time that San Francisco had a chance to win it, Al Rosen went out and he acquired Rick Russell and Don Robinson. Then he got Craig Lefferts, which really helped their ball club. And he made the moves he had to move when the Giants won their division. Looks like he feels that they've got a legitimate shot this year, and he's not a general manager who's going to sit on his hands. So expect a deal from San Francisco within the next week. Giants leading Houston by a game and Cincinnati by a game and a half in the West. This one high. 2-2. Two -two. Well, the Phillies apparently interested in a stable of young pitchers. The Giants would make available in the proposed Bedrosian deal and then the Henderson deal. We hear Maldonado and Gerelts and a young pitching prospect as possibilities. Runner goes and the pitch has bounced through the coaching box at third, moving Jackie Moore out of there. So the count holds at 2 2 with a man at first and one out. We'll pause here for station identification. You're watching Cubs baseball on WGN, Chicago's very own Channel 9. Yubi Brooks at first, reaching on a fielder's choice. He's there with one guard. Marty Peavy on deck. Wallach continues to foul pitches away with a count at 2 2. Wallach leads the league in doubles. He has 22. the call at second. There's no doubt the throw beat him. The only question is, did Rhino keep his foot on the bag and the Cubs might have gotten a break? An outstanding effort by Vance Law diving to his left. The ball beats Brooks to the bag. Now let's keep our eye on Sandberg and see if his foot is still on the bag. Terry Tata thinks it is. Uh, from that angle, it's hard to tell. We'll look at it from a different angle. I think the Cubs got a break. It only takes a split second, that's all. <laughs> Just a nanosecond for his foot to be on the bag with the ball. Now here's Peavy bunting third base side. Barehanded pick up by Law on the throw, not in time. Peavy catching Law back at third, puts down a bunt single. Wallach moves into second. So the young catcher bunts his way on. Peavy runs very well. And if you run well and you see that third baseman back, all you have to do is lay it down in his direction. And he just lays down a perfect bunt. Nothing Vance Law can do, although he makes a fine play. Peavy is well across the bag. So the Expos keep the inning going. Three hits now off Balecki. And here's Spike Owen. There are the numbers on Owen. He popped the third his first time. Came into the game hitting 210 left handed. And the pitch is high. Owen oh, has drawn high praise from Hubie Brooks for solidifying the infield situation here in Montreal. He's been very steady at shortstop. Owen oh, out of the University of Texas, a college teammate of Calvin Chiroldi. Balecki comes in with a strike. It's one and one. Owen said he couldn't wait for the offseason to get Shirley back out on the golf course. It's ironic that the praise would come from Brooks because it's a position vacated by Brooks that's now filled by Owen. Buck Rogers said that Hubie had slowed down a step or two. They thought his best position was right field and they had to fill the void at shortstop and couldn't do it until they made the trade for Spike Owen with the Red Sox. The pitch is high. Two and one. Balecki up a little bit more in the last inning or so than he was early. He was sharp early. As soon as he starts getting the ball up, that's when the line drives start coming out of the bats. So he'll have to be careful here because Owen showed in the first game of this series that he can be a force offensively. This one wide. So Balecki is behind Owen. Three and one. 
In Balecki's last outing against the Mets when he won four to two in New York, he had problems early through the first couple innings with location. But then the Cubs came back, got him a lead, and he caught his second win and actually pitched well. He's behind Owen. And a foul ball back. Today, it's been a little different situation. He was sharp early as the Cubs broke out to a 4 0 lead. They now lead 4 to 1 in the bottom of the fourth. And Balecki in this inning, not quite as sharp as he was in the early stages of this game. Full count to Owen. Two men on with two men out. Owen oh, drives one into right center field. Dawson is there waiting and puts it away to retire the side. No runs out of that. One bunt hit. Two men left. Two four. Four to one. Cubs. On to the fifth inning from Olympic Stadium, Montreal. We have a good crowd this afternoon. We had better than 30,000 paid last night. May have in the neighborhood of 40 or so today. Judge, when I was talking with Dave Dombrowski before the game about this contract that Von Hayes signed, where he has a clause in his contract where he can't be traded to either Canadian team. It was a big contract, can come upwards of $10 million over five years. But he said that he didn't feel that that was a fair clause. Years past, there was a tax consequence if you got paid in American money in Canada. But now the ball club makes it up, and he feels it really stops a trading situation because there's a few players besides Von Hayes that have that in their contract. Here's Damon Berryhill. Oh, what a grab by Wallach at third, and the throw to first got it. Wallach, a gold glove play right there. Taking a base hit away from Barry Hill. Wallach won the gold glove last year, and this is why they think he'll win it again. But he does have 11 airs this year. However, he's got some great range to his left, and probably only Terry Pendleton can field with Wallach. This is an example why they have fended off all the trade offers in the last few years for Tim Wallach. And here's Lloyd McClendon. McClendon has walked twice. Two of the six bases on balls given up by Langston. Routine play to third, long throw, and that's out number two. Wallach to Galarraga. So McClendon, after being walked twice, went after the first pitch and bounced to third. You mentioned, Dwayne, that the pitches are starting to pile up on Langston, and so this is an inning where he'd really love to get out of it with just a few pitches. Yeah, only a couple pitches so far. He had thrown 87 pitches through the first four innings. Here's Vance Law. Vance one out of two, a double in the third. High ball one. Ball game in the fifth with the Cubs leading four to one. Barry Hill and McClendon have got out third to first to open the Cub fifth. Law out front. And the count is one and one. Langston has a very strong arm. Most pitchers, when they get up to the 100 pitch mark, their manager and pitching coach are starting to look out there and they'll have a pretty short hook on it. But Langston probably can get up to the 120, 125 pitch mark without losing any effectiveness. He goes to two and one on Vance Law. He made the jump from double A to the major leagues with Seattle. Won 19 games a couple years ago with the Mariners. 15 last year. Line drive, but right at Owen. Sharply hit ball by Law, but Owen grabbed it, and the Cubs are up and down in order in the fifth. So a quick inning. Bottom of the fifth coming. 4-1 Cubs. Of the summer fun on the Andy Griffith Show. Barney adds a motorcycle with a sidecar to help fight crime in Mayberry. So it's a week of America's favorite crime fighter, Andy Griffith, which begins tomorrow at 6 on Channel 9. Bottom of the fifth inning, Mark Langston, the Montreal pitcher, comes up with his second hit of the ball game. Langston on the first pitch, singles into left. He doubled back in the third inning. He's a good athlete and has enjoyed a chance to swing the bat of the National League. He's two for two today. Here's the problem. Last time out, felt like he got the ball up and away to Langston. He drilled it to right, so he probably figured, well, I'll come inside, jam him. 
Now he rifles a single to left. Maybe the breaking ball is in order next time. He's Otis Nixon. Switch hitting outfielder. 0 for 2. Nixon takes a pitch down for a ball. Now Langston has two of the four Montreal hits. Nixon has struck out and bounced out to first. Nixon to pull the ball. He hits the ball right behind him. Langston with very good speed scores easily. And Nixon goes into third base. A triple for Nixon. That's his second triple of the year. And now Tom Foley is at the plate. Calvin Giraldi goes to work in the bullpen. Lucky showed a lot of signs of weakening in the third and fourth inning. And so far, his fastball has flattened out. He's gotten it up, and every time he does, the Expos hit it hard. Foley single in a run in the third. He's one for two. And a foul ball, strike one. I would think that Don Zimmer would go to the bullpen, even if Balecki is able to get through this inning. But he's hoping he doesn't have to go to the bullpen in the fifth. Andres Gonaraga is on deck. Nixon, the runner at third. Down and in. A ball and a strike. So the top two men in the order, Nixon and Foley, have the runs batted in. Langston has scored both Montreal runs. Going to be a balk. No hesitation. He walked him out. And it's a four to three ball game. It's a no pitch. So the count reverts to one and one. Nixon has been walked home the second of the year, charged to Balecki. And now it's a four to three ball game. And we'll take a look at it normal speed. Mike Balecki comes to the set position, and that's just a terrible call on the part of Demuth. He had a second hesitation right there, and Don Zimmer can't believe it. That's not a good call. Now the 1-1. One -one. Foley hits it on the ground a second. Sandberg still to first is in time for the out. So the ball call scores Nixon. It's 4-3 to three now. One out, base is empty. And Andres Galarraga. Who's observing his 28th birthday today is the hitter. He's 0 for 2 so far. Galarraga. Grounds this one to short. Ramos has it, and the throw is in time. Two outs. Two gone in the fifth for Tim Raines. Second walk in the fourth. Tim hasn't been bunting a whole lot, but the best way to get out of a slump is to lay one down. Marty Peavy showed that if you catch Vance Law back, you can do it. And right now, Vance Law is well behind the bag at third. Swing and a miss. Rains went after the fastball. One strike to count on him. Steve Wilson has joined Chiraldi in the bullpen. Malecki due to hit second in the sixth inning. There 
is a strike. He has the jump on Reigns. 0-2. Five hits for the Cubs, three runs, five hits for the Expos. Oh, to the count. Reigns takes it away. One ball, two strikes. Single by Langston, and then the triple up the right field line by Otis Nixon. Made it a four to two game. And with Foley at the plate, a balk was called on Balecki, scoring Nixon to make it four to three. Foul ball back. Count holding it a ball, two strikes. Malecki making his 12th start of the year. Ground ball, first base. Cubs had him positioned well. McClendon takes care of it unassisted. Two runs scored, two hits, nobody left. Two five, the score, four three Cubs. The Expos have climbed right back into this one after the Cubs jumped to a four nothing lead. The Expos have made it a four three ball game thanks in large part to the hitting of their pitcher, Mark Langston, who is two for two with two runs scored. Now as we go to the sixth, Domingo Ramos will lead it off for the Cubs. Ramos had three hits and a run scored last night and has been on twice today with a single and an intentional walk. Nobody up in the on deck circle yet and nobody up in the bullpen. So it would appear that Balecki is going to come out and Dwayne with the off day tomorrow. Maybe Don Zimmer might be pushing his luck a little bit with Mike Balecki who seems to be losing it. The pitch to Ramos is down ball one. Domingo Ramos. Phillies leading the Mets five to two on the top of the fifth at Veterans Stadium. There's a strike. The count is one and one. Ramos filling in at shortstop for Sean Dunstan. Dunstan with a tender hamstring. Ball two. Two and one. Five strikeouts for Langston. Six bases on balls. There's Balecki. Moving into the on deck circle. Four runs, five hits. And a line drive into right. That's going to be in there for a base hit. So Domingo Ramos opens the sixth with a single, and that will give Balecki a chance to do some bunting. Let's take a look at the pitch. So you think you only have to hit strikes in this league? High fastball over his head, and Domingo Ramos says, I like that one. It's looking pretty good. I think I'll line it to right. And he continues to impress you. Well, like he sacrificed in the second inning, takes the pitch upstairs for a ball. Mike with three sacrifices on the year, three out of five in sacrifice attempts. Domingo has his batting average up to 289. He started this series in the 240s. The pitch is bunted up the first base side, rolling fair and picked up finally by Galarraga. So Ramos breaking on the pitch, and Balecki puts down the sacrifice, scored three unassisted. So Ramos is in scoring position for the top of the order, Jerome Walton, who's been on three times in a row. It's kind of a shame that Balecki did bunt that particular pitch because Ramos had about a three step jump off first base. And although he's not the fastest member of the Cubs, he would have stolen second base easily. Walton with two singles and a walk. The pitch down and in. Ball one. Look at how far Ramos is to second base by the time Balecki had the ball come off his bat. One of the great jumps of all time as Langston just completely forgot about him. Walton takes one high. Two nothing the count. Now Galarraga comes in from first to talk with Langston. Comes with a three run first on the home run by Dawson. Added a run in the second inning. The run driven in on a ground ball by Dwight Smith, and that's the difference in the game at the moment. 
Ramos on second. Now time call. Langston floats it over everybody. So the count still two and zero. Oh. Instead of stopping in the middle of his delivery, Langston went ahead and just flipped the ball right over. Not only the hitter and the catcher's head, but he floated it over the plate umpire's head as well. So the count to Walton, two nothing. Walton has seen the ball very well from Langston today. Let's see if he gets a fastball here. Walton had the base hit in the seventh inning last night, driving in Ramos with what turned out to be the deciding run of the game. The Cubs won 3 2. And the pitch is a strike. 2 and 1. Boy, that's one thing about Langston. Even though he's behind, you will not always see the fastball. Now the count 2 and 1. The count is three and one. Langston said early in his career, since he had such a great arm, when he found himself in trouble, he tried to throw his way out of trouble. Realized that didn't always get the job done. He made that adjustment. Turned out to be a 19-game winner two years ago. Three-one the count to Walton, and a strike on the outside edge. Walton is on his way to first. Bill Hahn went up for the right arm, so the count is full, 3-2. There's a big curveball, 3-1. and one. Walton gives up on it, and it catches the outside corner. That was a strike where catcher Marty Peavy caught it, but not where it came over the plate. And a breaking ball, 3-2, got him on strikes. So Langston stayed with the breaking stuff. And strikes out Walton. Out number two in the sixth. And here's Dwight Smith now, the left handed hitter. Smith 0 for 3 with a run batted in on the ground ball to second in the second inning. And it's a strike. The Langston. Crawling behind Walton 3 and 0 came back with three breaking balls to get him starts the left handed hitter Smith with a breaking ball. And now Don Zimmer pops out of the cup dugout. He's asking. I don't think he likes the calls this inning but Don is saying that I didn't say anything. Apparently had made some gesture toward the dugout. Zimmer comes out. Zim comes out to have a word with Han. And that's it. A strike the count on Smith. Ramos, second base, two gone. Smith takes one inside. It's one and one. Phillies are batting, leading the New York Mets five to three at Philadelphia. Game in the seventh. Magadan homered in the sixth inning for New York. Up and in. Smith goes down, and the count is two and one. And the Pirates have added four runs in the third at St. Louis. That's now 10 to nothing Pittsburgh. Arnie calls this a Wells Fargo pitch. He went down in stages. Not bad, Arnie. You're having a good Sunday. 2 1 pitch. All three. Too close. 3 1 the count. Well, if he went with the breaking ball to Walton on 3 and 1, he's got to come with it here. I would think with the open base, he'd come to him again with a breaking ball. But if he throws a hittable fastball, Dwight Smith should be right on it. The 3 1. And a bouncer foul off the fastball. 
He did get the fastball and couldn't do much with it. So look for the breaky here, Dwight. Full count to Dwight Smith. And it's high. He walked him. Langston gives up his seventh walk. So the Cubs have runners at first and second. To God and Ryan Sandberg is the hitter. Sandberg has walked twice and struck out swinging. As a hitter, you tell yourself here to lay off the curveball unless you absolutely have to hit it. What you want to do is hit Langston's fastball. See if Rhino can pick one of the fastballs out of this assortment. And the pitch in for a strike. Well, Langston more times than not here in the sixth, throwing the breaking ball for strikes. And that was a good one. He still has plenty of bite on that curveball. Langston has made 19 pitches in this inning. So he's made 112 pitches for the game right now. And we are not through the sixth inning. I think PV is telling him to at least take a couple of looks back at Ramos at second. Nobody's paying any attention to him. The Cubs could just as well double steal. Ramos is getting a lead halfway down. And a line shot, one hop to short. Owen comes up to play at second out there. And the Cubs are out in the sixth. No runs, one hit, two left. Bottom of the sixth inning coming. The score, Cubs four, Montreal three. With Steve Stone and Audie Harris, Dwayne Stats moving into the bottom of the sixth inning from Montreal. Mike Balecki goes back to the mound. And the Cub bullpen is busy with Chiraldi and Wilson throwing. Hubie Brooks will open the Montreal half the sixth. And the first pitch lined into center. Here comes Walton, and he makes the catch for the out. You have to believe at the first sign of trouble, Don Zimmer will dip into the bullpen here. Balecki has struggled through the last couple innings. Touched for two runs in the fifth. I think Mike Balecki is out there on a string. Hubie Brooks hit the ball very hard. A one base hit or a walk, and that will probably be it for Balecki. Don would love to see him get through the sixth if he could and save his bullpen. Wallach misses the pitch, breaking down and away. Strike one. Balecki with three strikeouts. They all came in the first couple innings. As a matter of fact, they all came to the first four hitters of this game. He got Nixon, Galarraga, and Reigns, three out of the front four hitters. He gets in on Wallach, and he inside outs it foul up the right side. Two strikes. That particular pitch showed you that Belecki is starting to lose it because Barry Hill wanted the ball low and away. Belecki missed with the slider on the inside part of the plate, and fortunately for Mike, it was well inside. And your hitters tell you when the stuff is going. They're hitting the ball pretty hard. And all things being equal in a situation where you don't have your good stuff later in the game, it's always best to stay away from a guy. And if he does take you out, make him go the opposite way. High and outside. A ball, two strikes. You see Peavy, the catcher on deck, Marty Peavy. Brooks is lined to center. One and two, the count to Wallach. Two balls, two strikes. Cubs scored three in the first. Andre Dawson hit a three run home run. Cubs added another run in the second, but the Expos scored in the third and two in the fifth to make it a one run ball game. And a popper. Barry Hill stalking this one. McClendon down the line, but it's going to be Barry Hill who makes the catch on the foul pop. Two outs in the sixth inning. Bases are empty. And the catcher, Marty Peavy, comes on. He is one for two with a bunt single. He's a good story because you never know where your break is going to come. As a member of the St. Louis farm system, he really hustled against Joe Sparks. Sparks had the Indianapolis ball club, and it stuck in his mind that Peavy loved to play the game, would give you 100%. When he was released by St. Louis, Montreal picked him up and here he is. 
And he takes a strike on the outside edge. If you were Marty, would you name your son Stevie? Would you? Sure. You might. That's right. <laughs> Two strikes. Given the tendencies that I've noticed you have, you probably would. <laughs> Artie wants to know if, if your name were Stone, would you name your kid Stevie? Yeah, of course. <laughs> or Rosetta if it was a girl. <laughs> or Jim. <laughs> the pitch is high, so the count of all two strikes. The lucky very close to doing exactly what Don Zimmer would love him to do, and that's at least get out of six. He went. PB out on strikes, and that retires the side. One, two, three. We are through six. Harry will be back in a moment with the score. Four, three, Cubs. With Steve Stone and Dwayne Stats, Harry Carey back at Olympic Stadium in Montreal, where the Cubs, once four to nothing lead, is down to a precarious four to three. It would behoove us to get a few extra runs. And here's a guy who hit out three of them the first time he swung his bat. A three run homer in the first inning. And popped out and struck out since as Langston hasn't thrown, a, thrown him another fastball except to waste it since he hit one in the first inning. Langston, a good looking young man, the pit. Swings and he misses. Langston up around the 115 pitch mark right now. And he's also been running the bases all day long. He must be in great condition. There's a drive in the left center field, going to be an easy out. And Rain makes the catch. One out. Here's Berry Hill, 0 for 3. Kathy and Carl, Orlando, Florida, sent Father's Day greeting. To Harold Jackson from Arnie Harris's hometown of Skokie, Illinois. That's the only reason I mentioned it, Arnie, because of Skokie. One out, nobody on. Barry, he'll hit the ball very hard in the third inning, chasing Nixon all the way back to the wall in center field. There's nothing wrong with a breaking ball of Mark Langston. 120 pitches into this game and it's still biting. Well, he's only allowed two hits in the last five innings. Four of the hits off whom came in the first two innings. 0 oh and 2 the count. One ball, two strikes. Looking ahead to the bottom of the seventh. It'll be the lower end of the batting order, but that's the end that's done all the damage for by, by Lecky. I don't know whether he kind of relaxes. There's a pitch struck him out. Barry Hill decided to make a run for it and realized that he saw Peavy go to first base on the bunt. He knew he couldn't outrun him, so he figured, well, let's give up the chase. This is great. I'm going to run and beat you. Oh, then I realize I can't beat you, so. That's a seventh strikeout for Langston. He's also walked seven. Here's McClendon. Two out, nobody on. Langston's probably wondering to himself. Why he's been wasting his time in the American League. An athlete who can hit like he can hit. He's two out of two against Bilecki. And has scored two of their three runs. Big grin, he knows he's going to be tagged. Two out. Slow curve in there. He's got a sharp breaking curve and then he has a change of pace curve. He also has a fine fastball in the slider. And a great competitor too. 
2 2 pitch. Foul back. You get the feeling if McClendon can get a fastball out over the plate, he could take him out of the ballpark. He hit a home run against him in spring training. But he's probably going to be looking at another breaking ball right here. There's a high pop foul out of play. Two balls, two strikes. That's the difference between location and velocity. That was a straight change. McClendon looking fastball, and he got the head of the bat through the strike zone a little too quickly. Ball outside. Three and two. Van Slaw would be next. McClendon, who has walked twice, bounced out the other time. Three and two. Ground ball. Diving stop. Here's a throw. But he beats it out for a hit. Spike Owen made a great stop again. But McClendon beats it out. Fine effort by Owen, who doesn't have great range. And Lloyd McClendon runs too well to get him on this play. Thirty five thousand nine hundred and sixty eight paid here today. Here's law. There goes the runner. They're going to call the bulk I think. Yep. And that puts a man in scoring position. The Cubs saw the same thing with Mike Balecki, only that time it scored a run. So Mark Langston picks up a buck, and you can see Terry Tata in your picture. Here now is Law. What a time to get a blow. Boy, McLemon had a great break. Break it cost him a stolen base to ball there. Pitch low. One ball, no strike. Bullpen up and going now for Montreal. Langston heading up to the 130 pitch mark. One ball, no strike. Now the pitch. Herb is outside, ball two. Andy McGaffigan up in the pen. Came in and pitched two fine innings of relief last night. Two balls, no strikes. Ball three. And Domingo Ramos, who's two out of two, would be next. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised if they turn Vance Law loose. Three balls, no strikes. Strike call. Three ball, down the strike. Ramos is five for his last six in this series as Steve Wilson gets up and gets loose. McClendon the lead. Two out. Three and one to pitch. Ooh, he swung and he fouls it off. Three and two. He has a good slider and a good curve. And he changes speeds on. Both curveballs, tough cookie out there. But the Cubs lead 4-3. Three balls, two strikes. Van Slaw waiting. Line drive base hit to run is in. Spike Owen paid the price of not being tall. If he were six feet tall, he the hell the ball as it was and went off his glove in the short left field, a base hit and a big RBI for Vance Law. Vance Law hits this ball hard enough to just barely get over the head of Spike Owen. It's RBI number 24. Owen does everything he can to try to keep this ball in the infield. So a balk turns into a run for the Cubs, and that could be the biggest run of the ball game. Here now is Reba Ramos. There's Rick Sutcliffe, one of the heroes last night. Curl outside. Eight hits now for the the Cubs. Langston has been unduly wild. Struck out seven, walked seven.
The pitch. Inside ball. Two balls, no strength. Langston is due up second in the seventh inning, and normally you'd say, well, you can go to the pen or a pinch hitter, but Langston has been the best hitter on this Expo Ball Club. That's been Mike Belecki's weakness today. Langston. Two balls, no strength. The pitch. Whoa, a wild one. Trapped by PB. For a moment, he lost track of where the ball was. Ball three. It's a good stop by Marty Peavy. 58 foot breaking ball. Tough pitch to handle. But you see Peavy shifting his weight and making sure that ball hits off the chest protector. And lock and advance. Three balls, no strikes. The pit. Ball four. Boy, oh boy, that runs. He's been on base four times in a row. Two walks, two hits, scored a run. And now by Lecky is being called back and Mitch Webster is going to be the pinch hitter. Webster will bat for by Lecky. Webster pinch hit. In the first game of the series with the bases loaded nobody out in the ninth. At a time when the Cubs were envisioning a big big rally. But this is another day men are on first and second. And he'll be facing the left-handed slants of Langston batting right-handed. I think he'll be facing the bullpen, and all Buck Rogers is waiting for is for Webster to be announced. He started to take a walk out to the mound. And he's waiting to see exactly who's coming up. It is Webster, regardless of who he brings out of the pen. And let's see if he goes with his left-hander, and I don't think he's going to. Well, he should know whether Webster's a better hitter, right-handed or left-handed. This year that's not just the stats a guy has played for you you know the figures sometimes lie but you know what his real talent is whether it's right handed or left handed. All right that's it there's going to be a new pitcher Andy McGaffigan will be back with more in a moment. Teammate, so he's very familiar with him as Don Zimmer shouts some encouragement. Balecki, during his six innings, permitted three runs, five hits, walk two, fan four. Here's Mitch Webster turning around now to hit left handed against Andy McGaffigan, who worked two innings last night, lying only one hit, that being the only base runner he permitted in a losing cause. Philadelphia leads the Mets 5-3 in the seventh. Pirates leaving St. Louis 10 to nothing in the fourth. Gaffigan's fifth. There's a smash foul outside first base. Tim Burke guarding the bullpen worker. He gets another save. Yeah. <laughs> Webster. Hitting 263. One out of five is a pinch hitter. Man's Law has turned around to bite his former mates, and Webster can do the same thing. He swings and he misses. 0 oh and 2. It's been a good day on the Cubs for X Expos with Andre Dawson in his three run homer. Vance Law with an RBI. So let's see if Webster can follow suit. He's in the hole, 0 and 2. Five three in favor of the Cubs. Fastball outside. One ball, two strikes. He just wasted that pitch. Webster was half three homers. One ball, two strikes. Ball two. Webster 
Webster's hit one home run right handed, two of them left handed. Two balls, two strikes, two out, two on. The Cubs lead by two. The deuces are wild. Two-two pitch. There's a high pop fly easy out. Reigns coming in. Makes the catch. And that retires the side. But one run scored. Two hits, two left. We go in the bottom of the seven. It comes out in front five to three. Harry Carey back in Montreal. Steve Wilson, 24 year old. Left hander of the Cubs will take over. He's won three, as you see. Lost none, save one. It's got a very easy job if you can call it that, and that's get the game to Mitch Williams. Wilson at 3 and 0, oh, the ERA right at the 3 mark, on for the 18th time and he's got a save. Only given up one home run in 27 innings. Here's Owens batting right hand and takes a strike. Owens nothing out of 2. Bottom of the 7. Cubs leading by 2. Fouls it out of play. He was one of the guys in the trade for Rafael Palmero you didn't hear a lot about. That's because he was a double A pitcher. But obviously, the scouting system for Jim Fry and the Cubs worked very well because Wilson has been a big man in that trade and he has filled the bill in middle relief for the Cubs. Oh, and two of the count. Foul to back. By Lecky. Worked a good ball game. Six innings, five hits, three runs. If it hadn't been for Mark Langston, he probably would still be there. Langston had two of the five hits he allowed and scored two of the three runs. One ball, two strikes. Tommaso Garcia in the on-deck circle. So Buck Rogers starting to make some moves. And that will be it for Andy McGaff again with Brett Gideon warming up in the bullpen. Fouls it back again. One ball, two strikes. Barry Hill now goes out to have a word with Wilson. Probably about keeping the ball down. That ball right up in the eyes of Spike Owen. Spike Owen has hit three homers. Two of them right-handed and one of them left-handed. One ball, two strikes. Owen is a slap hitter from the left side, but from the right side, he's got some pop, a little like Ozzie Smith of the Cardinals. He fouls it off again. One ball, two strikes. Calvin Chiraldi's out in the bullpen. Outside, ball two, two balls, two strikes. Big ball game for the Cubs to win. They hold on to first place and increase their lead. The bit. A high pop foul out of play. Two balls, two strikes. Montreal's half a game behind the Cubs. There you see Don Zimmer studying the possibilities on both lineup cards. Two balls, two strikes. Again, he fouls it. This one may be catchable. McLendon's there, and he has it. One out. Let's pause for station identification. You're watching Cubs baseball on WGN, Chicago's very own Channel 9. Damaso Garcia, a second baseman, right-handed batter. Will bat for Andy McGaffigan. Garcia comes into this one at 239. 
No home runs, nine RBIs, 0 for 10 as a pinch hitter. He drew a base on balls last night against Mitch Williams in a tough situation. So he showed some patience after falling down 0 and 2 in the count. Third ball a little bit high. One ball, no strikes, one out. 24 year old Steve Wilson. Boy, he shows a lot of boys out there for his limited experience. Two balls, no strike. Garcia, a disciplined hitter. Ball three. Three balls, no strike. And the strength. One out. Bottom of the seventh. There's a long drive way back to Rome. Walton is there. Two out. Garcia hit the ball on the button. And Jerome Walton getting a good break on the ball. Hauled it in easily. It's a big ballpark, and you might as well use it all. 3-1, Garcia guessing fastball. He got it. He hasn't hit the ball out of the park this year, and when little men hit him, they don't go quite as far. Here now is Otis Nixon. He triple home a run, batting left-handed in the fifth. And they're talking about the bunt right now and the fact that Otis Nixon will lay it down. So Clendon is telling him, He's very fast. Get to the ball quickly because I'm going to hang back. Look at outside. One ball, no strikes, two up. Law playing shallow, so is McLendon. High ball, too. Will be next. We'll probably have a pinch hitter for him. He being a left-hand hitter. They've got a good one in Rex Hudler, who also plays second. So that would be a natural situation for Buck Rogers if Nixon can keep it alive. Two balls, no strikes. Strike called over the outside corner to me. Nixon would love to get a base on ball. He's hitting only 230. There's his button in the air. Two McLevin, one, two, three, and out. At the end of seven, Cubs still leading five to three. <laughs> Harry Carey and Steve Stone as we go now into the top of the eighth. Jerome Walton leading it off. Brett Gideon is the new pitcher for the Expo. We saw Gideon with the Pittsburgh Pirates. He's got a sinking fastball and a slider, and he comes into this one with no record and a 270 ERA on for the fourth time. Well, the San Francisco Giants made the deal that was rumored this morning. The Phillies have traded relief pitcher Steve Bedrosia to the Giants. For pitchers Dennis Cook, who, by the way, won a ball game yesterday for the Giants. Terry Mulholland, a left-hander, and minor league infielder Charlie Hayes. Jerome Walton leading it off. Two balls, no strike. Ball three. Brett Gideon, a right hander. Three and nothing. Walton has been on base three times today. Fry call. Steve Fry up and throwing in the bullpen. So a left-hander getting ready. Buck Rogers hoping that Gideon and Fry can help him in middle relief. That's a big question mark. Three balls and a strike. Foul the pitch back. Three and two now. Walton has been on base three times today, and that's not going to hurt his on-base percentage. 
since coming back he's really given the Cubs a big lift in the leadoff spot. Ray balls two strikes. We're in the top of the eighth. Fouled it off again. Three and two. You have to make Gideon get the ball up. He throws a natural sinker, and if it looks knee high, by the time it gets to the hitter, it drops out of the strike zone. That's, of course, easier said than done. But a lot like the way Bruce Souter pitched, if you make him get the ball up, he becomes hittable. Pulls a foul again. Three balls, two strikes. think they'd be pitching out here. Walton has stolen three bases. The first time that any Cub has stolen three bases in a game since Bobby Dernier back in 86. And he's got the dry ice concession here in Montreal. Oh for three. For Dwight Smith. Low and outside. Gideon is out of Ozona, Texas. Makes his home in Leander, Texas. 6'2, 195 pounds, 26 years old. He's modeled a lot of uniforms. He's originally with the Pirates. He's been in Macon, Prince William, Nashua, Harrisburg, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Indianapolis, and now Montreal. A right hander delivered. Ball outside and high. Ball two. And there goes a the catcher, Mark Peavy, out to talk to him. This is a good ball to run if you're thinking about him laying the ball in there. He knows he can't walk Smith. You know a fastball's coming. Smith, a good contact hitter. If the Cubs want to show some movement. And they've got a red hot runner in Jerome Walton who seems to have the timing down at the major league level. Two balls, no strikes. Fouls it back. He wasn't going. So now the count on Dwight Smith. Two balls and the strike. Jerome Walton, the runner at first. The Cubs would love to get a runner two here. To guard against any more hair-raising finishes. Two balls and the strike. He's back. This crowd, unless they encourage him on the scoreboard to yell, don't say anything. There's a throw to first runner back. Gideon doesn't have much of a move, so Walton can even get another step. Trying to take advantage of the arm of Marty Peavy that hasn't been particularly good today. Two balls and a strike. There he goes. There's a pitch line foul ball. Oh boy, just a couple of inches down the third base line. So the count two and two. The hit and run almost worked to perfection. Dana DeMuth right on the call, and you can see that ball a couple of inches foul. Well, no less of personality than Bertie Tevin once said. Baseball is a game of inches. 
Two balls, two strikes. All three. And now, not much doubt about Jerome Walton going. Three balls, two strikes. Swung on line drive into center field will be caught. Smith lines to Nixon. One out. That'll bring up Sandberg. 0 for 2 today. Walk twice. Buck Rogers has been pitching out in this series. It's a little difficult at times for a base runner to read the catcher, but occasionally a young catcher, and that's what Marty Peavy is. Might just take a step out there to tip off the pitch out. So he's looking over at Buck Rogers to see what he wants to do. But it's a natural situation right here. One out, one on. Curve inside. Sandberg with two on the six hit a hard low line drive. The spike Owen made a fine play on and tossed in the second for a force out. Damn the end. The bet. Foul ball down the third baseline. One and one. We're in the top of the eighth. And looking ahead to the bottom of the eighth, we'll have Foley, Galarraga, and Rain. If anybody gets on, Hubie Brooks and Tim Wally. So we got to go through the good hitters at least one more time. Low and inside. It's amazing that Walt has so much success. Stealing bases. He really doesn't get too big a lead. He probably should hear Harry because I think he's getting the sign to go at this point. But perhaps Don Zimmer doesn't want to take the bat out of the hand of Andre Dawson. You notice fellows that steal a lot of bases usually have one foot on the carpet. That's considered a good lead. Only exception to that, as I recall, was Lou Brock, who was able to get a short lead but had such a quick first step that he was able to steal easily. There's a pitch outside. Ball three. Sandberg looking for the either take sign. He wants to know if Walton is going to. Three balls and the strike. There he goes. There's the peg in the center field. Here he is trying to third base at two. And a perfect throw. Had Walton not got mixed up at second base, he would have made third. That's exactly what happened, Harry. He gets entangled at second base. And right there, when he looks out to center field, he should realize that it's going to be very close at third. The throw beats him, and the call by Dana DeMuth. Watch it again. Good, solid throw by Nixon. Right there. So Sandberg walks for the third time, but he's still up there, rather. He walks down for the third time. And he's on at first base. Walton is thrown out trying to go from first to third. He gets credit for the stolen base at second. So he has four stolen bases today. Gletti tells us he should have stayed at second, Harry. The National League record for steals in a game is five. Tony Gwynn did it most recently. There's a high pop foul. Might go out of play, and it does. So Dawson is still alive. 
Dawson, who started the ball game with a three-run homer. Walton has four stolen bases today. He stole second and third in the first. Stole second in the fourth. Was out trying to steal third. Stole second here in the eighth. Was out trying to reach third on the wild throw. Right to the shortstop. That'll end the inning. So it is no run. One man left. We're going to the bottom of the eighth. Cubs leaving five to three. Harry Carey back in Montreal. There's Don Sutherland, the actor. If you wonder what actors do in a ball game, he's swallowing a little mouthwash, making sure his breath is good and fresh. <laughs> You're not supposed to swallow the words, though, Harry. Here's Rex Hudler coming out as a pinch hitter. Oh, he takes the strike ball. He's a pretty good bunter and very fast. Hudler hitting 333 this year in a utility role for Buck Rogers. Two for 11 with a home run and an RBI as a pinch hitter. That evens a count. He's batting for Tom Foley, who was one out of three driving in the run. The entire Montreal attack has been provided by their starting pitcher, Mark Langston, who had two out of two and scored two runs. A high fly ball, that's easy. Andre Dawson makes the catch. That's four in a row retired by Steve Wilson. Not only that, Mike Bilecki in his last two innings retired six in a row. So that's 10 straight batters retired by the Cubs between Bilecki and Wilson. One out is Galarraga. Don Zimmer would love to have Reigns hitting from the right side if he could. But that all depends on getting out Galarraga. First pitch in there, a good breaking ball over the outside corner. For the same thing, but he missed that corner. Galarraga, you know, hits the ball to right field just as well as to left. One out, nobody on. Bottom of the eighth. Hey, swung and missed. He buzzed the fastball right by him. Set up with two big curveballs, and Wilson had something on that one. He also kept it away from Galarraga, which is where Wilson has got to go. So let's see if he tries to drop the curveball over the outside corner. Fastball instead. And he was aiming that one for the inside corner. Two balls, two strikes. Galarraga, 0 for 3. Ball three, three and two. Calvin Chiraldi in the bullpen. Three balls, two strikes. A bouncing ball through a base hit. Galarraga singles to center. That will bring up rain. is nothing out of two. What makes him more dangerous than ever. He hasn't had a hit against the Cubs this year. All for 17. Don Zimmer has a decision to make. Do you go with your youngster and make Reigns hit from the right side or do you bring in Calvin Chiraldi? Reigns from the right side hitting just 222 as a left-hand hitter 295. Calvin will surely be brought on to face UB Brooks, I would assume, regardless of what happens to Reigns.
finally gets a base hit against the Cubs just out of the reach of Steve Wilson right by Ramos. And here comes Don Zimmer. Once again, another nail biter in Montreal. Boy, that's a tough break for the kid. Both hits were ground balls. But seeing eye ground balls. Right through the middle of the, uh, the diamond. Retired four in a row before these two hits. We'll be back with more following this message. Calvin Chiraldi will be the new pitcher. He pitched only one man last night. Got him out before Mitch Williams took over. There you look at the numbers. One and four for Chiraldi on for the 28th time with a 3.30 ERA. And Calvin has a tall order. A couple of men on and facing the best clutch hitter of the Expo, Hubie Brooks. How do you get this Hubie Brooks on? I look down, he's hitting 277, which is an average enough average. But boy, every time we look up, he's hitting a rope at somebody or, a, or beyond somebody. Well, the key, Harry, is that two out of the three times he's batted today, nobody's been on base. He is a very tough hitter with runners on base because he hits the breaking ball very well. And Calvin would like to stay away from him. Brooks have a habit of bringing in his hands and able to drive the ball to left field if you get that fastball inside. So Barry Hill going out to have a word with Calvin Chiraldi. And he wants him to remember to keep an eye on the base runners. Galarraga, not the fastest man around, but he still is capable of stealing a base as he's stolen five this year. Chiraldi appearing in his 28th game. The pitch to Hubie Brook, low and outside. Mitch Williams was up throwing in the bullpen. We're in the bottom of the eighth. A little bit outside, ball two. Willie come to him with the fastball. Two balls, no strikes. He fouled it off. A fastball inside. Two and one. Brooks had an inside-out swing on Ellen. He's grounded into five double plays this year. The Cubs looking for another one. Two balls and a strike. Shift his weight and get in front of it. Now it's three and one. The count goes to three balls, two strikes, one out. And Tim Wallach will be next. has not thrown a slider yet and it would take a lot of guts to throw one here but with first base open it's quite a pitch if you can get it close three balls two strikes Be the hitter. Wallach has grounded 
into 11 double plays. And here comes Don Zimmer. He's got Pico loosening up along with Williams. Pico is the man who can get you the ground ball because of the sinker, but Williams is the big save man for Don Zimmer. And this is why managers are paid to make decisions that are awfully tough and none much tougher than this. And they want Pico. The wild pitch really changed the situation. And Jeff Pico is going to come in hoping to get Wallach to hit into a double play. Pico. That's one two lost up, no save. He's appearing in his 25th ball game. And nobody hits into more double plays than Tim Wallach, who's grounded into 11 of them this year, and that leads the ball club by a wide margin. And Don Zimmer brings in his sinker baller. Just another day at the office for Zim, and just another tight ball game in Montreal for the Cubs and the Expos. And there's Mike Fitzgerald. The bases loaded with one out. Now Wallach, nothing out of two against Malecki, walked one. But now he's facing a sinker ball right hander. This becomes a difficult situation because what do you do? The best pitch of Pico is a sinker ball. But Tim Wallach is a low ball hitter. One of the few right hand hitters in baseball that hits the ball down. But a pitcher, all things being equal, has got to go to his strength, and that's where Pico will go. We're going to have a pitch runner coming out for the expo. Dave Martinez coming on to pinch run for Yubi Brooks. And he represents the leading run. Martinez running for Brooks. Rafael Landestoy telling him to make the line drive go through, but on a ground ball, you've got to get down there in a hurry and you've got to break up two to get the Expos a run. Jim Wallach. 0 for 2. This game is not for the faint hearted. Playing back. One out. Ground ball. Throw the first. In time for the out. A run score. And it's a five to four ball game. A run battered in for Wallach as Galarraga crosses the plate. 32nd RBI of the year for Wallach. And Pico got the ground ball, but it was so slowly hit that the Cubs couldn't turn a pair. Good thinking on the part of Domingo Ramos. He realized that Martinez got a good break off first, and he only had one play, and he gunned him out. Five to four. And we're going to have. Let's see who's going to hit. Fitzgerald had gotten the bat, but. It's going to be Wallace Johnson, I believe. And I think you'll like to put him on first base, Harry, and take your chances with Spike Owen. Johnson, the premier pinch hitter for Buck Rogers. Although he's hitting 255 this year, he is, is hitting 289 left handed. He's 5 for 23 with six RBIs as a pinch hitter. Here comes Zimmer out. He might bring in the Twitter right here. That's what it's going to be. Jeff Pico did his job. Got the ground ball. They got a run on it. But the Cubs still lead by one. And here comes Mitch Williams, who got the, his 16th save last night. Zimmer knows that Johnson is not a good right hand hitter hitting just 111 from the right side and he also gives Mitch Williams a base to play with with the open first base. Now Buck Rogers has the decision. Do you bring in Fitzgerald or do you let Johnson hit. 
And it's going to be Fitzgerald. So the wheels turning on both sides. And this is why watching National League Baseball is a lot more interesting than American League Baseball because of the moves that managers have got to make. Well, Fitzgerald made the last out against Mitch Williams last night, striking out to end the ball game. And it comes up again with runners in second and third. The Cubs leading by a run in the bottom of the eighth. Fitzgerald one for four as a pinch hitter this year, hitting 237 overall with a couple of home runs and 16 RBIs. And Mitch Williams looking for save number 17 at one and two with a 2.27 ERA on for the 32nd time, and he's fanned 37 and 35 and two thirds inning. Boy, the big play of this inning. Besides the two seeing eye base hits against Steve Wilson, who deserved better fate, he was pitching great, four men in a row retired. The two balls were not hit hard by Galarraga and Reigns, but just right through the middle. But then the wild pitch really changed this inning around. To the point where Fitzgerald now has a chance to put his team ahead. He's one out of four as a pinch hitter. Mitch Williams ready. Fastball is high. One ball, no strikes. No strikes. Ball three. Three balls, no strikes, two out. Mitch Williams has to hesitate because he's got a man at first base and Bruce Fremming, who will be watching for that pause. This way, three and all, they turn them loose. Surprising base move. hit puts him ahead. That's what the Buck Rogers is gambling on. He knew he'd get a fastball, and he thought he'd get it right down the middle. Fitzgerald right on it because he fouled it straight back, but just got under it. Five to four comes the pitch. He walked the ball four. The bases are loaded. Santavania coming out of the dugout as the pitch hitter next. There's two out. Spike Owen is the batter. Owen is nothing out of three. But he's a pesky little hitter in these kind of situations. Much better hitter from the right side. He's the man yesterday that almost hit the ball through the infield, but for an outstanding effort by Ryan Sandberg at second base. One ball, no strikes. Slider. Giraldi walked the man. Pico came in and got a man out. Williams walked the man. Can't afford to walk anymore. One ball, one strike. A high fly ball. Way back. We're going to be caught to retire the 
the side. Holy cow! Spike Owen hit the ball a long way, but Walt made the catch. One run, two hits, bases loaded. At the end of eight, Cubs still leading 5-4. Harry Carey back in Montreal. There's Davey Martinez. He's going to stay in the game playing right field. Rex Hudler also stays in the game to play second. And Frank uh, Fitzgerald also stays in the game. He's catching. Those are the changes. With Brett Gideon on the mound, that stays the same. And the Cubs trying to add an all important insurance run and give Mitch Williams some breathing room in pursuit of his 17th save of the year. Here's Damon Barry Hill. He's 0 for 4, hit a couple balls hard. Eureka! To the Mets had come from behind and tied up the Phillies. The Phillies score the winning run on the bottom of the ninth and win 6 5. The Cubs could pick up a full game on the Mets, a full game on St. Louis, and a full game on Montreal if they can make this lead hold up. Two balls, no strikes. This Gideon has walked everybody. He walked two in the only inning he pitched. Make him throw a strike, David. We could use some base runners. He swings and he fouls it back. The Cubs have made eight hits, four in the first two innings, a total of four from then on out. Gideon in his second inning of relief. McLendon is next. There's a base hit to left. And Barry Hill is on there. Barry Hill singles to left. That brings up McLendon. He's one out of two. He's walked twice. You know, between Langston and Gideon, they've walked ten men. Eight by Langston, two by Gideon. Bullpen's going to get up and going for Montreal once again. Ground ball left field base hit. And his runners on at first and second. McLendon grounded a single to left. And that brings up Van Slaw with nobody out. Lloyd's been on base four times today with a couple of hits and a couple of walks, and he finds the hole on the left side of the infield. So the Cubs in business here, trying to put some daylight between themselves and the Expos. Quite often in this kind of a situation, Don Zimmer's been known to start the hit and run with both runners breaking. You've got to make some contact with Barry Hill at second base. Van Slaw, the hitter. Steve Fry up once again in the bullpen. These runs are important to get. There they go. Swung on the ground ball to short. Throw to first in time, but the runners are advanced. And so he did get a moving again. And Law came through by hitting the ball on the ground. No chance to make a play on the other two men, and we have runners at second, third, and only one out. You sure there's not some management in your past here? You made a pretty good call, and Vance Law does the job by making contact, and no chance for Spike Owen to do anything but take the out at first. Yeah, but what I'm afraid of, why I didn't think the Law would bunt, as important as these runs are, they would walk Ramos, and that's what now they have a chance to do. And Domingo, has been on base four times in a row. Two out of two today. Three out of uh, four yesterday. We had, they had five times in a row that he hit, not hit safely on. The last time up, he's tried out. 
He's been on base today four times. This will be his fifth time in a row. There are the two guys who, who are spinning the wheel in a game of baseball fortune. Here John comes, Zimmer and Buck Rogers. It's going to be Steve Fry coming in the game and with a left hand around the mound. Don Zimmer still has the trump card to play and that's the suicide. Jim Fry the little left hander no relation to our Jim Fry. Steve Fry rather. But he spells the last name the same way. Now the bases are loaded. The uh, predicament that Don Zimmer is, he's got his number one pinch relief pitcher in the ballgame. You can't pinch hit for him. You have nobody left who can hold him. It's got to be sink or swim with Mitch Williams. And there you take a look at Steve Fry, who's been very effective for Buck Rogers. 1 0, 159 ERA on for the 11th time. But he's a specialist. He doesn't go long into the game. 11 and the third innings, 11 hits. He hasn't given up a homer yet, walked seven, struck out eight. And there's a meeting between Chuck Cotier and Mitch Williams. Fry has committed one balk. No wild pitches. Looking from that standpoint. Mitch Williams has a big grin on his face. You think he's a little too tight, Harry, to play this he game? Is, he is just a remarkable young man. I, I love him. And he's meeting with everybody. <laughs> Might as well share the well. Now he's meeting with Dick Pohl. They're letting him know what Fry throws. Fry, a little left-hander. There you take a look at Steve Fry. He's 5'9", 170 pounds. Out of Newton, Pennsylvania. Last year with Indianapolis. He only appeared in 13 games. He came over from the Met organization at Tidewater in 1988. He was a football, basketball, and baseball star in high school. I don't know what that's got to do with this. He's coming in with the bases loaded, one out, and Mitch Williams a hitter. Ground ball to the shortstop, out at home, and out. Oh, the throw hits a runner. Let's see, they're going to call out. him out. He was on the inside of the line. They call Mitch Williams out for running on the inside of the line. And so, Mitch Williams swinging at the first pitch. Grounded to Owen, who threw to the plate to Fitzgerald for one out. His throw down to first hit Mitch Williams, but he was quickly called out because he's not in the baseline. Let's watch it again. And Don was arguing with the wrong guy. He went to argue with Bruce Fremming. The call belongs to Bill Hahn, and he was inside the line, just barely, but enough, and that's all it took. Hahn made the call, and it was a correct call. And so we go into the bottom of the ninth. The score still comes five, Montreal four. Another trade. Listen to this one. The Phillies have traded centerfield Juan Samuel to the New York Mets in exchange for centerfield Lenny Dykstra and relief pitcher Roger McDowell and a player to be named later. Wow. What, a, what a trade for Philadelphia. They've got a man to replace Samuel in center field, and they certainly needed a reliever of the quality of Roger McDowell. Here's Santavania pitch hitting. First pitch fouled back. Santavania is hitting 263. Only the second time he's been able to pinch hit this year. He's usually the starting catcher just back off the disabled list with a fractured finger. the count. There's a slider high. One ball, one strike. Five, four. In the bottom of the ninth, the Cubs leading. Hey, swing 
Could you miss it? The pitchers of record are still a starting pitcher. By Lecky for the Cubs. Mark Langston for the Expo. Williams on the hill. Shooting for saves number 17. Time call. Over the first, one away. Santavania rolls to Law. One gone. That will bring up Otis Nixon, who tripled in the fifth, one out of four for the day. He tried to button the seventh, but popped out. And he might just do it again. With Williams falling off the mound to the third base side, and that's exactly what Don Zimmer, who's right on top of the situation, is telling Lloyd McClendon. They're playing for the bunt, both McClendon and Law in close. Strike call. One strike and nothing. Otis Nixon. Pitch a little bit outside. There's one thing about Don Zimmer, and that is regardless of if his moves work or don't work, he is very rarely, if ever, outmanaged. This man is on top of most every situation, and you can tell by that big sigh that it's never real comfortable out there in Montreal, especially with Mitch Williams on the mound. There's just no breathing room. One ball, one strike. There's a fly ball. Andre Dawson, two out. One more, and the old ball game is over. Look at Zoom wriggling around. Also, Buck Rogers. <laughs> Zim is also talking about the push bunt from Rex Hudler. And Rex. Don Zimmer, the most animated manager in baseball, and what a treat to have him on the bench every day. Boy, here's the guy they got to get out with Galarraga coming up next. Rex Hudler. 5 4 Cubs. Strike call. One strike to nothing. Hudler very fast. Hitting 333 with three homers. Who originally signed up by the Yankees. He tried. Oh, he, he was trying, he to, trying get to get hit by that ball. He had to make an effort to get out of the way, but he was trying to. Kind of a decoy of getting out of the way, hoping the pitch would hit him. You can tell he's not one of the ball players making two million dollars a year. A high pop foul back out of play. Well, he knows, Harry, that his job is very simple. He's not a home run hitter. He's got to keep it alive for Galarraga and Reigns, and that means getting on base any way you can. But Mitch Williams seems to have his pretty good control today, and when he gets the ball over the plate, he is very difficult to hit. One ball, two strikes. Here it is. Fouled it back. There is a study of rival managers in the heat of action. One ball, two strikes. Left field, Cubs, Cubs win! Cubs win! Boy, look at them come out of that dugout. And the Cubs came to Montreal. They saw and they conquered and they leave, leading by a game and a half. And they gained the full game on all their pursuers today. Wow, what a ball game again. And Mitch Williams has won, saved his 17th of the year. Woo! We'll be back with a total of the moment. <laughs>